Knowledge is power. And this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230 or toll-free. Toll-free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Hi, welcome everybody. And this is the Week in Cannabis News. Uh, this is Las Vegas um, Cannabis News. And I have Kurt Bukoch to my right, Raymond Fletcher, we have Perry Haichu on report from Alaska, and we also have Derek Sante in uh, in the house. He is the head of marketing for Dr. Reefer, and Dr. Reefer is presenting uh, the presenting sponsor for Hemp Fest. Mm-hmm. So for the next hour, we'll be having local news, regional news, and everything that's uh, that's okay to put on the radio. No cussing, guys. All right, let's let's hear about the local news from uh, Raymond. What have you got in the local news, Raymond? We have a few things going on. Um, as you know, um, medical marijuana applications are being accepted by the state now. You have until the 18th of August to get it turned in. That's Monday, guys. That is six days from today. Thank you, Kurt. <laughs> and as of today, there have been 24 applications submitted. So 24 applications have been submitted so far, and so that's a lot of people going to be at, uh, the mad rush at the end there. Yeah, so we should probably see about another 300, I assume, in the next week. Oh, I, I wouldn't doubt it. And um, speaking of um, the state, the department that has accepts the medical marijuana applications and for the cards, they have a name change. And it's due to a bill that was passed by the General Assembly. That's true. Uh, The mental health and public health departments have merged, and they are now the Division of Public and Behavioral Health. So if your if your card looks like it's coming from somebody different, so we used to we used to send our cards to the um, uh, Department of Public health and and now it's department of public and behavioral services so if it looks like you're addressing it to somebody different it's just because they've kind of merged those departments within the state of nevada just sort of combine themselves and then we have some uh north las vegas news as well yeah north las vegas this is really kind of interesting uh they're they're marijuana licensing um their marijuana licensing law has kind of been tweaked. They say qualified applicants who have pay, will have to pay a ten thousand dollar flat application fee, but will get to skip out of the five digit annual and gross revenue fees charged to applicants who haven't managed to win over leaders of another jurisdiction. That's- so, if you've applied in another jurisdiction and also in North Las Vegas, and you were denied in another jurisdiction, North Las no. Vegas is giving you some some love. Not if you, even you're denied, right? Not, not that. outside of North Las Vegas. I mean, and not inside. Uh, the, these entrepreneur, entrepreneurs who are already approved to grow, test, or manufacture medical marijuana products outside oh, okay. of North Las Vegas, and which provide services to establishment within, would be defined as privileged under the new rule that was passed. So you can sell your product in North Las Vegas? You, you still can, yes. But they're saying they're saying because their application process is still open, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Actually, North Las Vegas, what you need to do is you just need to make sure that your, that your land use is correct in North Las Vegas. You submit your state application that has North Las Vegas on it. And then you submit your North Las Vegas application for a medical marijuana establishment through August 18th through September 5th. Uh, That is the deadline for North Las Vegas. So North Las Vegas is actually doing it much more in line with the state and what the original legislative intent um, uh, directed them to do. It said just make sure that the just make sure your zoning 
is correct on all of those buildings. Uh, when she gets the state approval, then you can come down to, you know, our jurisdiction and get approval for the MME applications. And that's what I'm thinking is going on because the county, because of the city of Las Vegas and the city of Henderson have already opened and closed their application periods. My understanding of this new rule is if you've already been accepted, if you've already been approved in another jurisdiction and you want to do it here as well, you, it'll be a privileged application where you don't have to pay those five digit fees and whatnot, et cetera. All you have is that flat rate. Well, that's great. That's great news. And then we have um, some news coming out of Henderson. Hendertucky, of course. Mm. Sunset Road seems to be a busy road for the medical marijuana establishments. That would go against the desires of the city council as they would want the dispensary spread about, but apparently a number of applicants have applied in that direct. I'm not as familiar with Henderson as you may be. Is that like a huge stretch or a main fair fair fair? Well, it's, I, I think it's it's just that a lot of those businesses actually qualify for the zoning that they laid out. These commissioners say they want these spread out and put in different places, but then they put all these additional zonings on and it limits to where you can put it and then they all end up clustered together. I agree with Kurt. That's mostly what this is. It's just a, a perfect storm of zoning and probably real estate availability. Yeah. Well, that's, that, go ahead. That's more in line with, I, I think, with what's going on, Perry, I think. Well, then that would explain why 19 of the 27 applications for dispensary um, are north of Wigwam Parkway and 10 are in Sunset Road Corridor from Green Valley to just past Boulder. Wow. That's a lot. That's kind of down by the Dr. Reefer office. Exactly there. by Dr. Reefer right now. <laughs> Our medical offices are right there uh, near um, Sunset and, of course, Stephanie. So we're uh, a about a block uh, west of there. So I, uh, I, I I would hope they are just trying to be close friends, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That, that'll that help. That'll help drive some more businesses to you guys, uh, people wanting their medical marijuana card. And, and you know, you guys are, you guys are all over that. You've got like, what, a billion, a uh, billion, like, billboards all over town we do yeah it's it's just a right, the right way to reach out to people and uh it, you know it's funny we, we do everything from google to regular ads you hear some stuff on radio here and there yep. um but uh but the billboards are, are what we've been known for for almost a decade now and people are really just excited about it they always they always make the connection and of course the connection from there on is just with uh the marijuana movement so they're always a, there's always a smile associated with it well, that's true. For those of you that are just now joining us, this is Derek Sante. He's the head of marketing for Dr. Reefer, and they're one of the presenting sponsors for Hemp Fest, or the presenting sponsor. We are the for presenting sponsor for Hemp Fest. Fest. Yeah, they came to us, and we were uh, more than uh, happy to be the presenting sponsor. Um, when it came down to uh, this event, we just wanted to help uh, make sure that they move forward. They met the right kind of people like we can and uh, and had the opportunity to grow and then figure out because they're taking a lot of the, br the blast and the brunts because of the first actual event coming out of the gate. Yep. And so we want them to do well because it's going to affect the rest of us as well. It, that's absolutely true. I've been talking to uh, Shay and she does a lot of the, uh, she picks up a lot of the sponsors uh, for the Hemp Fest and, sh and she's saying that a lot of people are coming on board. They're being, they're really excited to come on board because this is the first event, but there are a lot of, there are a lot of hurdles that Hemp Fest has to kind of jump over being in the Clark County Amphitheater. Oh man, we all know what goes on in reggae at the desert. We've all been to reggae at the desert, in the desert, but it's not, not like open. Well, it's not like, it's not like an open, like, hey, you know, it's a hemp fest or, but you know, reggae is associated with cannabis for well, sure. I'm definitely curious to see how the county approaches this. I'm hoping for a definite hands-off, more lackadaisical approach and only address problems as they see it rather than trying to make problems out of nothing as some uh, local venues do. Like if you've ever been to the House of Blues, they're very, very aggressive with their security procedures, almost overly so to the point where I don't enjoy going to that venue anymore to, to go to concerts and I would rather default to more, let's just say friendly venues. I'm not going to put it on the air, but we all know where, where they are within the community. I'm hopeful that my friends on the county commission will make make an appearance and hang out with us common folk down there. Well, well, well they're always welcome at our booth. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll reach out to my good friend Steve and invite him personally. 
<laughs> you know, Steve gets a bad rap. He's just really tough, but he, you know what? He's tough, but he's kind of he's fair. And for a chairman, he needs to keep those meetings moving. You know? And and he did a and phenomenal he job. He did mm -hmm. on that, you know. And I, I must go back and commend him. He, he, you know, I may disagree with him on some things, but he he does a phenomenal job. And that concludes your presentation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what he says at the end of three minutes. And that concludes your, uh, you know. Uh, okay, cut Trap it off. The right now. <laughs> it's just hilarious. But back to Hemp Fest. Back to Hemp Fest. I'm getting super, super excited. We are super excited too. The more we hear, um, you know, we try to help them out. We we connect them with uh, some people, and we've been trying to make sure that we can do whatever we can to help them along the way. And a as Hemp Fest goes, I'm getting updates constantly. Uh, we have a lot of great acts. Uh, we have some uh, s some members from. Um, uh, Cypress Hill performer. We have Burner performer. We have uh, Baby some, Bash. Uh, yeah, Baby Bash. Uh, we have another one from a Westside Connection. Nappy Roots is going to be there. But also, Very there's cool. going to be speakers there as well. There's going to be a beer garden. I mean, this event is more than just one thing. That you know, just like this, our society is very pluralist. You know, yes. we want to have so many different things going on, and so everyone can kind of enjoy it for whatever they want to make out of it. And I think the Hemp Fest can be that for them. Well, what can we as a community do to help this first event be as successful as it possibly can? Well, first and foremost is buy tickets, of course. <laughs> no doubt. So, you know, we don't get money. Dr. Reefer doesn't get money for that, but their friend, our friends would like you guys to buy tickets. And how well, do you go about getting tickets? You can go to LasVegasHempFest.com. Of course, the event is October 4th. Um, everyone is very excited. If you have a business out there and you'd like to be part of it, because that's, that's, that's another thing I think the city is going to look at, is how many businesses are wanting to be part of this event as a whole. Because, as you know, being shunned in any way is automatically going to have an eye towards it but if more people are accepting and it, we have everyone from from food and donuts to uh, glassware and vape if they're all going to be there then they're going to see that this is more than just uh, you know a, a singular event for a singular uh, uh, people or demographic so we really want this to just get bigger and better and you know you have to have a first event to have a second event so we we really look forward to seeing what hemp fest can do all right if you'd like to win tickets to hemp fest please give us a call at 702-731-1230 with in the next uh what five minutes and you'll win two free tickets to hemp fest we also have a phone caller number, number five will win uh, caller. caller number five will win uh, you can call into 866-820-5528 if you're out of the region or 702-731-1230 to win your two number five to win your two free hemp uh fest tickets that's right. These these tickets are valued at what thirty five dollars a piece is what they're selling for now. I think so right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah they're going really well. And the more we, the more he adds, the more uh, people are just going to see the value in it. I mean, just to be along with people who are excited about it, like you are, but also the artists, the acts, the beer garden. There's going to be so many things there. So we're really excited. That's great. That's great. Um, do we have any more local news? I are we you, you, just have the the mesquite city council voted to allow a medical marijuana grow facility in the community last tuesday the council passed two ordinance in a four to one vote at a special meeting you know what i really like uh some of these officials in mesquite um council member uh, members deliberated back and forth about dispensaries because they said that they didn't want children to get a hold of the cannabis but city councilwoman cindy delaney um was quoted as saying i'm not convinced any uh, that by anybody that having prescription marijuana available is going to make it more available to your kids. Do you not teach your kids to stay out of your medicine cabinet? Oh, so common sense talk. Common sense talk. That's what we like out of Nevada, man. That's right. Our, I've, I've said that to many council people uh, throughout the last year that it's it's not their job to police police parents. It's the parents' job to parent the children. You know, uh, it, it, by by not letting people have it isn't going to keep it away from kids it's people themselves that need to keep it away well, it's from like, kids you know blaming teachers when the kids don't want to learn or don't, and they don't they don't take the time to help them collective that, responsibility as, yeah exactly and you know it's it's our job as parents to it, to make sure that our children are safe and if that requires you putting a lock on your medicine cabinet so they don't get into your Xanax or you know ibuprofen or whatever else can harm them um, you know, then just keep your pot away from your kids. Lock on your gun cabinet, 
lock on your liquor cabinet. As, are you seeing a pattern here? It well, begins with the parent, their responsibility. Well, either that or changing your attitude toward it. I mean, in a lot of uh, families, uh, you know, in Europe, you have wine. Kids can have a glass of wine. It's just your attitude toward it. If you make stuff prohibited, no people want to, you know, people want to, you know, do what's prohibited. But if you say, you know, oh, it's not a big deal, a lot of, you know. Not a lot of lock, uh, your, grow lock room. your room. That's, yeah, that, that's, that's, that is an important thing. We have we have locks on our room, and uh, the so that children or anybody can't get in there except for us. So, still giving away two Hempfest tickets. And call in is seven zero two seven three one twelve thirty or eight six six eight two zero five five two eight. Caller number five. All right, so we're going on a break here, and uh, when we get back, we'll have our winner of the HempFest tickets, and we'll talk more about HempFest and regional news. Cannabis has been used as a healing medicine for over 5,000 years with no toxic side effects. Is it right for you? The professionals at Dr. Reefer are here to help. Now accepting new patients, make an appointment today at 428-0000. Bring your medical records, or if you don't have them, their staff will work to document your qualifying condition with a 99% approval rate. If you have any of the following conditions, cancer, AIDS, muscle spasm diseases, severe nausea, severe pain, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, or PTSD, call Dr. Reefer today for your free consultation and their money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Call 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. The Vaughn Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation, toll free, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Locally owned and operated TSI Total Safety Incorporated has kept our community safe since 1998. We provide superior services offering professional installation, local fire and burglar alarm monitoring, and the fastest response times in Las Vegas. We also offer armed and unarmed security, video security systems, access control, and fire safety installation and service. All of your security needs are covered. Call us at 702-967-0000 that's 702-967-0000 or visit us at tsivegas.com. They said it would never happen. They were wrong. Las Vegas Hemp Fest is here. October 4th. All ages with live performances by Burner. I party like a rock star. Let the best fish tail all out the window. I got it off the fish scale. Cypress Hill Sin Dog. <laughs> Marlon Asher, also playing New Kingston. Potluck, a surprise performance from the LBC. And 25 more rap and reggae artists, speakers, and comics. Tickets available at Painless Wayne's Tattoo Shop and at the Las Vegas Hemp Fest.com. October 4th, the Las Vegas Hemp Fest. Brought to you by Dr. Reefer.
<laughs> Welcome back. That sound means it's time for our 420 moment. Uh, today for our 420 moment, we're going to honor Jerry Garcia. Um, as many of you know, uh, the, the August 1st was uh, his birthday, or would have been his birthday, and just this last uh, Friday, August 9th, was the anniversary of his passing. Uh, Jerry Garcia was uh, born on August 1st. It's so August 9th. He was an American musician who was best known for his lead guitar work, singing and songwriting with the band The Grateful Dead. So, uh, Jerry Garcia, you know, obviously used a lot of cannabis and and uh you know led his life around it and uh influenced a lot of people uh i was just recently here in this community we just had a tribute to him on the ninth over at uh jalisco uh, jalisco's uh cantina and it was it was something magical it was it was it was something the community needed we haven't had a any live grateful dead being played here in a long time and uh the whole community came out and it, it was like family out there so we uh, give a we give a heads up and, uh, and a big thank you to Jerry Garcia for you know bringing this culture to us. You who Jerry? You know what? There at Las in the Las Vegas Jam Band Society said that they're going to be um, hosting a lot more Grateful Dead um, events with. Uh, live jam band music being played. They're also going to be family events so that you can bring your uh, whole family to them. It's not just it's not just for 21 and up. Uh, the Grateful Dead was a jam band and that was very community oriented and family oriented. And we'd like to you know honor that and the family sense um, that that the Grateful Dead brought to their music. All right, so there is our 420 moment. All right, so let's move on to our regional news. Regional news. What do you got for us on regional news? Well, Raymond? Colorado from the Colorado Department of Health, teen marijuana use has decreased since marijuana became legal for recreational use. Not only have has the teen use uh, decreased, they're also also um, down on their numbers for drunk or just uh what a dui driving while under the influence drivers and traffic fatalities and traffic fatalities so there are a bunch of good things that are actually coming from the from legalization Colorado for the legalization you know and, and and to the naysayers who said that all these people you know it would increase amongst youth it would do all this negative thing it it's great to have all this positive news coming out of Colorado. I think one of the catchwords that were, were being bandied around before all this were pot-eyed zombies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that that has since proved exactly the ne uh, the to the negative where less people are being arrested for driving under the influences. There are less murder fatalities in the state, so everybody's more peaceful toward each other. And revenue is up by millions of dollars, folks. Millions of dollars. That's more money for schools, education, uh, police, law enforcement. Yeah. So th that's really great news out of Colorado. But up to the north, up to the great white north, well. I think we still got a little more Colorado. There is plenty of Colorado news. There's a report out about how successfully Colorado is regulating their new marijuana market. And really what this is all about is how they've been able to meet most of these or all of these deadlines that they kind of set for themselves when this all started, which of course is uh, in the world of government bureaucracy is is rare, but a welcome change for sure. They've been able to really get their butt in gear and really get this going. Uh, as you know, they opened a lot earlier than Washington and a lot of the naysayers, once again, as we've heard back and forth, have said, oh, you know, we, you'll never do it on time. You'll never do it on budget and things like that. And they've really blown a lot of the people away like from the Brookings Institute and some of these more conservative think tanks that have really you know kind of putting their teeth into them a little bit they've really been able to prove them wrong and uh, and not do, us, only do that, us right everybody we're not only able to meet the deadlines all everybody that's saying that there's going to be more DUI more of this more of that it's it's just you're we're quashing it all it's just the another way chink around. in the armor just another chink in the armor and, and the it, amount of money going for education they have a best pr program called Billing Excellent Schools Today, which received more than $1.1 million from marijuana taxes, and they're writing another $2.5 million 
uh, so schools can hire health care professionals. I think that they said that there was something like $19 million that has went to education so far in Colorado. Wow. Yeah, exactly. I think it, out of $193 million that they've taken in in taxes and $19 million goes to a long way towards getting people educated, books, seats in classrooms, you know, all sorts of good things. I Nine, can't wait till that happens here and we race from the bottom. Sorry. $19 million and what, was it 11,000 jobs? 11,000 jobs. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of green jobs, folks. Yeah, that's, that's not only money for the state, that's money for the residents of the state. All right, is there anything left in Colorado? Uh, not I got a small piece out of New Mexico here. It's a story about how a woman is trying to sue her employer over the fact that she was fired because she is a medical marijuana patient. We're seeing more and more of these cases across the medical marijuana West. Uh, a New Mexico physician's assistant, who is also a medical marijuana patient, says one of the state's largest health care providers violated her rights when it fired her following a positive drug test after she was already employed. They gave her a drug test. It was not a pre-employment uh, drug test. Did and they say anything prompted that drug test? I mean, mm. did, it, was it like an accident or did they just look at her and go, you know what? Or hear her talking about how great her health was? As far as I can tell by the story that's here, it was a random test. She works at a Presbyterian hospital and, uh, you know, her doctor had given her a state recommendation and things like that. They chose not to honor it and she is, of course, trying to protect herself. And try, I mean, it's ridiculous that people that are medical marijuana patients can't be gainfully employed in this world. You know, we have this problem in almost all medical marijuana states, and it's definitely an issue I want to address at some point. But I'm almost afraid to yeah. because if we draw attention to it, we might draw the ire of the larger uh, employers here in the state. And that could, of course, blow back on us in a negative way. So we have to tread carefully when we address these ancillary issues. Well, that's also true. But as far as medical professionals are concerned, we don't answer to we don't answer to normal uh, you know normal channels we answer to state boards um, your state board the medical state board of Nevada is who you answer to if you have an RN license or D or um, uh, MD license um, the Nevada State Board of Veterinary Medical Examiners are who the veterinary professionals answer to and the Nevada State Board of Pharmacy or who the pharmacist answer to those are the state boards that can yank your license and while they're not they're not an official they're not an official board they can they can fine you they can take away your license they can censure you uh so they can all do all sorts of different things uh to you to mess up your life um on the other side of of the news in new mexico they have a decriminalization proposal introduced um in albuquerque new mexico uh in monday uh in albuquerque City Councilor Ray Garduño introduced legislation to de decriminalize the possession of up to an ounce of cannabis for those who are 21 and older, reducing the charge to a simple $25 ticket. Under the proposed law, Albuquerque, which is one of the most populous cities in New Mexico, would save around $5 million annually on reduced enforcement cost, according to Garduño. Under the current Albuquerque law, someone caught possessing an ounce of cannabis could be jailed up for up to 15 days. And that's going to really, really affect the state budget, um, you know, of, of what's going on. To, to lock somebody up is way more expensive than to give him, them a ticket for 25 bucks, mm -hmm. for sure. I, I want to go back to this uh, job sink that Perry was telling us about a minute ago. Sure. Um, I... I think that's absolutely something we need to work on because I was terminated from employment and all I did was a call center. You know, it's not like I'm moving heavy machinery. Oh, you're he, preaching to the choir for sure. I've had he, problems with employers because of this for sure. And I uh, I had the discussion. I actually called some of the human resources, uh, corporate offices for some of the major corporations. I've called Caesars, corporate office, Boyd Gaming, etc. And I talked to some of their their executives that are really making the decisions, not the general managers of the properties, the people who are really you know, dictating policy down the line. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told them, I said, well, I'm a medical marijuana patient. They said, well, you know, we can't honor that. And I said, well, you can't or you choose not to. And he just, and they, you know, they don't really like to answer that. And even MGM uh, corporate has a chief medical officer that they relay these complaints to. So if you have a drug test and you have a medical marijuana card, they'll send your case to a medical compliance officer who determines independently whether you're worthy of employment at that point. Now, 
that's kind of a, a flawed system, in my opinion, to give kind of one person that overwhelming uh, authority, authority to because, choose. Because you can play it either way. They can say, well, if this person is legitimately handicapped, we really don't you know, want them here, even though that's le even though that's kind of uh, illegal. And then on the other hand, they say, well, if they are just using cannabis recreationally and they're seeking protection under the law, we don't want that either. So either way, they can still choose to burn you if they want to. So I would definitely want clarification in that law to just out and out outright protect medical marijuana patients. But like I said, I don't think we have the resources to attack that issue right yet at this well, you know, it's a strange it's, it's a strange mix with mgm grand and hard rock and everybody else if you are going to be employed there then you have to drug test clean it, and it, it even includes your card but if you are employed there and you have your card then you're protected so it's almost like you have to get in there once you're in, you're in. And once you're in, you're in. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And Kurt, I mean, Kurt had some trouble, uh, trouble with uh, what Finley Toyota. No, it wasn't Finley. It was, uh, it was desert. It was desert. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I mean, uh, because of my, because of my medical cannabis use, uh, my, my health turned around drastically within a year. Um, I lost a lot of weight. I was moving, moving again, and uh, you know, and becoming normal active. again, active again. You know, I could actually move, and I wasn't in constant pain. And uh, all my customers started asking me what I was doing because it was it was visibly noticeable the difference uh, in you know within a year and you know uh, and I wanted to shout it from the rooftops this is what I'm doing this is what I'm doing so uh, and uh, I got so, blacklisted so that's so. a really legitimate uh, legitimate you know complaint that we have about employment and I think that we should address it uh, during this legislative session it should be like a form of discrimination you don't have to claim that you take uh, Xanax or any other kind of medication Oxycontin. Well, exactly exactly mm -hmm. um, we do have a winner for the hemp fest tickets Casey congratulations you won two tickets we will contact you after the show to get you your tickets that's right great. On. Congratulations. Congratulations, Casey. And more on regional news. Actually, we've got a special correspondent in the studio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Perry, you just went up to Alaska. I did. I spent 10 days in Alaska. I uh, went to high school to sit in a valley high school in Telkeetna. It's a beautiful little town, and my mom lives in Willow still. So I was able to uh, tag along with some of our colleagues from the uh, National Can or the Nevada Cannabis Industry Association and some reps from the Marijuana Policy Project who were up there speaking at the Western Governors Conference on drug policy reform. And during that same time, there was a like a town hall meeting, I suppose, kind of feel held at a public auditorium in downtown Anchorage the other day that I was able to attend, uh, and it, it, it was really interesting. How do I put this? The response that some of the members of the crowd were giving, like reefer madness really is still in full effect in some of these really? areas. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we do our best to educate people, but a lot of these people either don't want to hear what we have to say or just go out of their way to really kind of demonize this this movement still. Like... Uh, it, it, it was so bad that some of the some of the residents, when they realized that they were sitting on the wrong side of the aisle, not only got up and left, but made a point to shout, you know, oh, you know, I don't want to sit with the dopers and you know the illegals and the legals are over here on this side of the room and things like that. And it's just comments like that that really kind of, you know, it. it, it it's hurtful a little bit still, you know, we're not criminals, we're not bad people, and we're doing this the right way. There's no coalition to, to legalize heroin in Nevada because we know it's a destructive force in this world. So we're doing our best to try to, to, do, what I, to do what we think is best for the people of Alaska and allow them to speak their own minds. And well, it was just really, uh, really interesting. But luckily, it was a, it was a spirited but fair debate. And uh, I think a lot of valid points were made. So. And, you know, Alaska has spoken. A, a recent survey has come out of... of um, states that have the most cannabis use to the least cannabis use per capita. Rhode Island was number one, and I think it was just because they're so small and it's so cold up there. Everybody wants to smoke. <laughs> but you know what? Alaska, Alaska was number, number, two. Two. number two. Alaska That's was not number surprising two. at all. Even though there are mostly, if you look at the demographics, they're a very Republican state. They're mostly libertarian Republican. People up there want to be left alone. Yep. They're kind of on the fringes of society, and law enforcement has kind of taken a step back to most of the locals also. You know, where else are these people going to go they're already gone as far as they can and a lot of them just could try to like to live off the land and and do what they can during the short growing season and of course that includes growing your own medicine also or you know self-medicating however you want to put it there's a lot of people who grow 
who grow medicine and, and grow grass in Alaska. It's what it's their biggest cash crop. It's not even close. And guess what, Nevada? We're finally not the last on a list. We're uh, number sixteen on that list. <laughs> So we're number 16. Uh, not funny. Music. We're not the worst. We're not the worst. But, you know, I think we're up there last in education and last in what? Healthcare or something like that? Well, I'm looking forward to being worst to first is going to be the marijuana <laughs> movement's uh, motto when we're able to get this revenue going. Right on. From so worst we'll to first. I think Perry just coined a phrase right there. We'll see, we'll see if we're so fortunate to get as much revenue as we're anticipating. <laughs> oh, I think about it. We, we allow reciprocity with the tour. Tourism alone is going to surpass what we'll any resident can pay for their medication. So, hey, Derek, how, how many people do you guys see at Dr. Reefer from California? They've just moved in from Cali and they're trying to they're trying well, to get legal here. Or? We hear that all the time. I mean, even at First Friday, I'm sure you guys hear the same exact thing. I have a California card. But, of course, that's going to run out. So how do I get my Nevada card? And we get a lot of people on a regular basis, people who have uh, already had the rights and, and were already using it because of the dispensaries and things in California yep. really want that opportunity here and as part of their life here. And so we, we see tons of people. There's a lot of people out there who come to us. Uh, and, and I'm coming to you as well. I'm sure just trying to find information on how to do it. Sure. Uh, the one thing, of course, is we cost more here than California, <laughs> yeah. which is, is one of their issues. But uh, besides Besides that, they are um, they are 100 on board with with covering that part of the life here as well. That's a big portion of it. And if you, you know, are listening to this and you're having a problem getting your medical marijuana card due to financial reasons, please contact WeCan702.org, and we can help you. Uh, we can help you get your medical marijuana card for a much discounted rate or possibly for free if you qualify under our under our program that we have. So. Yeah, most people really don't. Uh, that is our 501c3 public charity program is that we uh, get cards for people that can't afford them or either for free or at a discounted rate. We're not a delivery service. We're we're not a referral service. We don't even collective or anything. We're not a collective. Like what we do is we help people get their cards, help people afford to get their cards. And Dr. Reefer has been a really awesome partner in that initiative. No doubt. We can never thank you enough for a contribution. Uh, we, we, we are big fans, you know, Any, anyone who is pushing for the movement like you guys are and actually caring about the patients like like we do. We, that's really important to us. And so we are 100 uh, percent, you know, behind and helping anyone you bring to us. Uh, we believe you guys are great judges and, you you know, you guys hear so many stories. So uh, anytime you guys come to us, we know it's it's a real deal. Yeah, and, and even if you're not unemployed or disabled and you don't qualify for our program, if you're having trouble coming up with the money, uh, Dr. Reefer will put you on a payment plan. You yeah. Know? So yeah, you, you don't have to no come interest, up with it all it? at once. Yeah, it's no interest as well. Yeah, there's there's a lot of different options. We, we're we just trying to help people out. So if, 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 you, if you need your card so you can get your medicine, feel free to call us, email us, and we'll, we'll definitely talk to you. What's that number? <laughs> <laughs> the number is 702-428-0000. Well, thank you. Fantastic. Um, let's speaking of Californian people coming in from California, we have some California news, don't we? We do. Why don't ladies go first? Okay. Um, you know what? San Bernardino is going bankrupt. Isn't that where they just held one of their like hemp cons or, or some? Uh, yes, San Bernardino is where the cannabis cup is held. They have the Los Angeles cannabis cup held in that town, and I mean it was. It was a blast. <laughs> I can't wait till we till we have them here. Well, so they have a cannabis cup there, but they are not. They don't have legal pot shops in San Bernardino. So How strange. <laughs> they're raising a new idea of raising revenue um, by legalizing medical marijuana and taxing it. Um, it's not quite if you can't beat them, you join them. But there are many <laughs> municipalities. There are many municipalities in California that basically say we're not going to have medical marijuana in our municipality. And so far in California, it's been a municipality by municipality type initiative. If they want the medical marijuana there, then they need to pass local ordinances to get it. Well, San Bernardino doesn't have those local ordinances in place in spite of having this huge this is huge cannabis cup there and so um they're saying that they are a, a city of limited resources and they uh, they don't want to shut down local businesses because of because of bankruptcy and there are a lot of protracted legal proceedings that would that would come in the face of a bankruptcy and so to stave off that bankruptcy they're turning to pot so there's 
the, the city turns to pot. Have they actually passed the ordinance? Are they taking applications, or is this just an idea that they're floating at this point? It's an idea that they're floating. They're one of the 200 California municipalities that have maintained an outright ban right. on pot shops since the medical marijuana was made legal through a ballot re uh, referendum in 1996. And look around here for those communities that said no to the Green Rush. So who has said no to the Green Rush? Boulder, Boulder. City. I think, well, that's about it. Most of them are my board. The, the rest of them all jumped on here I didn't at the very expect last Mesquite. Minute. I really didn't, but that's it's really a welcome change. People might overlook that, but it's a big deal. You know, these small municipalities coming on board, it's it's always a welcome win. But I think we have to take a break pretty soon. So, um, Jen? Well, so, we're going on a break, and when we come back, more from California News and Regional News. Are you looking for a new career? For the next 20 years, 10,000 people per day in America will be turning 65. They're going to need somebody to take care of them. If you're interested in a career in home care or assisted living care, log on to ProCaregivers.com to find out how you can have a well-paying and secure job in this growing industry. The need for caregivers is so urgent that some classes are subsidized by the state, so you may not pay anything. ProCaregivers.com is certified by the state of Nevada and other states for post-secondary education training certification and can help place you in a job once your training is complete. Log on to ProCaregivers.com for more information today. WeCan702 is a Nevada cannabis community. We are a 501c3 nonprofit that meets in Southern Nevada. We are a social group that started in Las Vegas for patient support. We've been active in the community for over five years. If you'd like to join us on any of our events or parties, please contact us through Facebook at WeCan702, on Meetup at www.meetup.com forward slash WeCan702. Our website is www.wecan702.org. Be a part of the Nevada Cannabis Reform Revolution. Please join us and donate today. everybody welcome back to nevada cannabis news this is jennifer solis i've got uh kurt dukach raymond fletcher perry height and we have derek sante in the house from dr reefer all right so in regional news we have washington minnesota maine mississippi all of the m states well, you, you, except you, for washington. you're on your national bus i'm regional right here i oh, got you the got last one of more our california i got i got the last of our region here okay what's the last of our regional news raymond my what's homie up? my homie homie out of, out of <laughs> california gavin newsom he's a lieutenant governor he isn't? is lieutenant go okay. governor will back the right initiative for medical marijuana gavin he has made no secret for his support for medical le marijuana legalization, and now he said he's prepared to campaign for a ballot measure in 2016 to allow for recreational use. So he, he just wants to make sure that it is the right initiative. That's correct. And the right initiative would be one that addresses age limits. He doesn't want to see, you know, it in the hands of kids. Who does? I don't. Um, well, uh, sick kids. The yeah. right initiative is during a presidential election year so we can actually get the, the number of people to the polls that we need. Exactly. So, you're right there. I think Perry it, has a point. And you're right. You know, it, it's in the hands of kids that don't need it. Um, then one that addresses the advertising, driving under the influence, and he'd like to see questions on taxation answered where there are different taxes for medical marijuana or recreational use. I and, think there should be. There are different taxes on medication if you're if you're buying it or if you have it as a prescription via is if you're getting it over the counter. And you're absolutely right. And uh, California voters appear to agree with uh, Lieutenant Governor on the position. So, well, it'll be interesting to see what happens moving forward. I actually have breaking news out of Canada right now. Uh, Mark Emery has returned to Canada finally just this afternoon. Ca Canada's Prince of Pot has come home to a raucous, ruckus welcome from supporters in Windsor, Ontario. After serving his United States sentence for selling marijuana seats to customers across the border, Mark Emery crossed back into Canada from Detroit this afternoon 
Dozens of supporters were lighting up joints and smoking pot with vaporizers as they waited for Emery outside of Windsor City Hall. Emery, 56, was ex extradited to Seattle in May 2010 after he pleaded guilty to selling marijuana seeds from Canada to American customers. When Emery was first arrested almost a decade ago, the Drug Enforcement Administration heralded the seizure as a significant blow to the legalization movement. You know that Mark Mark Emery, uh, you know, is, is a drug war prisoner, and we have drug war prisoners here in America like Eddie Lepp that are still incarcerated um there's another thing that's happening that is just like a travesty in my and it's a slap in the face to everybody they're turning a supermax prison in colorado into one of the biggest grows in colorado <laughs> eddie lepp was it was locked up in in a supermax prison in colorado if, if people don't know eddie he was out of um clear lake california and he had a very large collective out there and he was growing for a lot of people it was almost like a hippie commune um and so that's why he was so dangerous those hippies anyway but he's been <laughs> locked up in a supermax prison in colorado now for a while so i think that we should f focus our and concentrate on freeing our failed drug war prisoners here absolutely no so doubt about it I'm, I'm super happy that mark's out let's let's free all the rest of the people that don't need to be in jail that's right yes no doubt what else you got for us over there chen well, you know what? I've got Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. mayor signs a bill allowing physicians to recommend medical cannabis use for any condition. I wonder Ooh. if that covers his condition of crack addiction. Marion <laughs> Barry. Oh, Marion Barry. Didn't he just get in trouble again? Like a yeah. wrong, wrong way car accident or something? Yeah. Something crazy. Under had a the diabetic episode. Of oh, wow. Oh, no. diabetic yeah, episode. Yeah, that's what they said it was. He had a medical episode and went the wrong way down the street and crashed I, into somebody head on. I've had medical episodes too, but they usually involve alcohol. I was about to say, how much did he tip in his medical episode? <laughs> well, um,. Actually, this is the mayor, the, the current mayor, it's Vincent Gr uh, Garay. He signed into log the council bill 200876, uh, which is there is the proposal that is entitled Medical Marijuana Expansion Emergency Amendment Act of 2014. It allows a physician to recommend medical cannabis use to anybody they believe could benefit from it, regardless of the underlying condition. <laughs> Elizabeth, Elizabeth, I'm coming. I'm coming to you, Elizabeth. Well, and, and that's the way it should be. I mean, that's between your doctor and you. I mean, the government shouldn't say, you know, oh, you can't use it for this. If your doctor feels it's appropriate, I mean, that's, why not? That's what they went to school for. I mean, my senator didn't go to school to learn about my medical conditions. Yeah. You know? And who is the government doctor still prescribing the marijuana to the four federal patients? We don't know, but they receive big tins of marijuana. Those are the tins I'd like to receive at Christmas yeah, time. Three, Just one. 300 <laughs> one-gram joints every month. You can buy the empty tins on eBay for $420. Really? Yeah. No way. One of the patients who still does tours and does books, he says uh, it's like a, what did he call it? A priceless piece of marijuana history to use in court cases. Any lawyer should have one if they're defending marijuana. And Absolutely. You know, people or things like that, because it's just a good hard piece of evidence to have when they throw that in your face. Exactly. And Here's with, with hard proof that the United States government says that this is this is has medicinal use so why is it on a schedule one yeah and they're running a whole garden for these four patients the garden of Whedon is just for four, four patients. patients so what are they doing the with University all of University of Mississippi right yeah. <laughs> yeah and that's messed up because uh, Florida just stopped uh, research on medical on marijuana because the federal government said that it was legal mm. yeah so yeah, exactly. you know I guess we the people should just be them Revolted. the government. Exactly. So speaking of Michigan, um, Michigan marijuana victories in Hazel Park and Oak Park. Um, yesterday's election in Hazel Park and Oak Park, Michigan, uh, if there are any indication, voters in cities across the towns in Michigan will be standing up for sensible marijuana policies in November. Voters in both communities voted to make it legal under local law for adults to possess up to an ounce of medical marijuana or no marijuana on private property. The measure received 62% of the vote in Hazel Park and 53% of the vote in Oak Park. So Ooh. Michigan is voting for sensible marijuana policies and adult use. That's great. Even though, I'm sorry, go ahead. Even though what? Even though Michigan's doing sensible, Minnesota's doing senseless. 
<laughs> let's hear what's let's hear. Minnesota has issued their draft right of medical marijuana rules. Back in May, Governor Dayton signed the medical marijuana program into law. It was one of the most limited and restrictive in the country. Um, the Minnesota Department has issued the rules uh, governing applications and oversight for two medical marijuana manufacturers. I guess they're only allowing two. The, these rules are provisional and may be revised before becoming final. Anyone interested in commenting may do so um, by following the department's instructions. So if you go to the Minnesota Department of Health, if you're a resident, if you visit that community, if you have a relative in that community, I urge you to look at their draft proposal and use your common sense, as Perry talks about common sense, to weigh in on these things because it's incumbent on us as activists. And the person that you would contact in Minnesota, her name is Michelle Larson. She's the first um, marijuana director with less than a year before medical marijuana takes effect. So she, Larson is an environmental health expert who's been an instrumental in implementing Illinois health department policies. She now has until July 15th of 2015 to design the state's medical marijuana infrastructure when Minnesota's medical marijuana is due to take effect. So Minnesota is moving fast. Um, Minnesota's medical marijuana law has passed earlier this year and is regard regarded as one of the most restrictive in the nation, as you said. And so she's got a tough haul ahead of her. Um, maybe, you know, if we can send her some, send her some suggestions from Nevada, that might help her out. I know that I know that the union's already been up there talking. I was to just going to say some of our mutual friends are deeply involved in that, and I have confidence that uh, that they'll lead them down the right path to victory. So, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. Is you know we have mutual uh, friends throughout the community, and it's incumbent on us whether you're in Anchorage, Alaska, or um, New York City, you should have the opportunity, should you choose, to medicate. No government organization should not tell you you cannot use a medication that relieves your, your symptoms and makes you feel good. Well, speaking of New York City, you know, the New York Times took out a, a uh, six-page editorial series advoc advocating for the national legalization of marijuana recently. And that stirred up a lot of attention, as you can imagine. In response to that, you had pro-advocacy groups taking out full-page ads and then anti-marijuana groups taking out full-page ads in response, and it's becoming this big hoo-ha. And uh, I, I love it. You know, I love when the, uh, one of the, I mean, it's got to be the most read newspaper in the country besides probably the Wall Street Journal or USA Today. Uh, the times they are changing. Yeah, decides to come on board. And, you know, it's uh, it's just another sign that marijuana is really going mainstream. We've seen si more signs. I mean, our past three pres sitting presidents have openly admitted to using marijuana. Some of our greatest Olympic athletes have openly admitted to using marijuana. The old, old adage, medal winners. Yeah, the old adage of, oh, you know, uh, if you smoke weed, you won't get anything accomplished in life. And, you know, that's just not true. I hear jokes these days that, you know, smoking weed is the path to the White House. And, you know, <laughs> and it's just kind of a joke that people are tossing around. But I also kind of fear that because the the uh, how do I put this the acceptance of it as a mainstream thing is also fueling the the opposition. They call oh, big marijuana big mistake is one of the opposition campaigns in Alaska is what they're calling it. They're they're trying to call us big marijuana like we're this big corporate monster out to get the get the little oh, guys wow. now. And it's kind of funny. So we have to be careful to keep our identity while becoming as grassroots. big as we need to be yeah we need to keep our identities grassroots so that we're not we're not you know say oh big marijuana industry and how dare they use that freaking not it's just a coin word it's a coin word yeah. people are using these days anti-corporate and they would just want to you know latch onto that and that, that we're somehow corporate we're some of the most grassroots individuals that i know i know but it's just one of those you know it's inevitable that that's going to happen so well, use michael phelps as an example michael phelps smoked a bong and he's the most decorated olympic gold medalist in history you can't counter that yeah. No, not yeah. really. And you got There's a guy who won the Iditarod a couple of years ago in Alaska. They tried to hammer him because he smoked smoked weed and uh and you got bill one. i did not inhale <laughs> we have coming up oh, thursday oh, commercials no no, no. coming up We're thursday the... august 21st at 9 a.m it will be the second medium meeting of the interim committee on medical marijuana room 4401 at the grant sawyer office building 
555 East Washington Avenue. So if you want to make your opinion known, you need to come down and be the change that you want to see in the world. Green Jobs Job Fair. We have our job fair coming up on the 25th at the, at the uh, Clark County Jewel Public Box Li Theater at the Clark County Public Library on Flamingo. So there are going to be employers there, and there are also going to be uh, a lot of different people in the industry, like normal, we can, of course. And so if you'd like to volunteer or you'd like a job in the industry, come on down and join us on July 25th, or August 25th. Sorry, we can, 702.org. Like us on Facebook.